What's up everybody? It's Susie from HeyGrillHey.com and welcome to my backyard. Today I'm going to show you guys some of my most absolute favorite uh, barbecue tools that you can have in your kitchen, in your arsenal to make better backyard barbecue so you can feed the people you love and become a backyard barbecue hero. I've got everything from a couple bucks up to a couple hundred bucks so if you want something to up your backyard barbecue game, I'll cover it today. Knives and shears. You don't need a lot of knives to make great food. Um, I think if I'm gonna recommend one knife to everybody, it'll be a chef's knife that you really, really, really love. And I think I've been through like five chef's knives before I settled on one that I really felt was a good fit for me. Um, I like Dahlstrong. I'm actually an affiliate for Dahlstrong because I love their products and I've been using them for like six years now. I feel like they hold a really great edge, they're easy to sharpen, and they give you a really nice value for what you pay. It's a great knife, but you're not totally gonna blow your budget. This is their Phantom Series. I also have a Gladiator Series Chef's Knife. Both of them I think are eight inches. The nines feel a little bit long for me, but somebody like Todd with bigger arms and shoulders, a nine inch chef's knife might be a great fit for him. So that's my recommendation for a knife. And it's probably one of the questions that I get asked most often, like what knife are you using? What knife would you recommend? Uh, it's a great place to start when you're building out kind of like your culinary art, like, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it's, it's, it's the first thing to put in your toolkit. Let's call it a toolkit. Put a good knife in your toolkit because you'll use it every single day. And this works for chopping vegetables, this works for cutting pineapple, this works for uh, trimming meat, this also works for slicing meat, like it does everything. So if you're gonna buy one knife, invest in a good chef's knife. Second thing I recommend is a good pair of kitchen shears. Uh, these are Shun kitchen shears. These ones are a little bit on the pricier side, but I have to be honest with you, I have a pair of, I think, Betty Crocker kitchen shears that I got at Target 10 years ago, and we still use those also. So you don't have to go all out in the kitchen shears department, but make sure you have something that's sharp. Make sure you have something with really good rubber reinforcement on the handles and something that you can um, really take apart and sanitize because if you're going to be using your shears like I do on things like you know spatchcocking a chicken or anything like that you really want to be able to sanitize these and that means you need to take them apart to be able to wash them so these are my favorite shears they just pop back together so easily look at how easily I'm doing this it's very hard on camera you guys <laughs> I got nervous there we go Da -da -da! two becomes one. Okay, another thing that kind of comes from the culinary side of things will be a microplane grater. Now, microplane is a brand, so they don't have to be called a microplane grater, but a really fine grater is gonna be your best friend. This works great for grating garlic, it works great for zesting, and I use a lot of zest in my recipes, lemon zest, lime zest, like that citrus zest really brings a lot of flavor to things that I'm cooking. So I use this all the time. And you can also grate cloves of garlic, so you don't have to mince garlic and have stinky garlic fingers. Uh, we also use this for Parmesan cheese. Any hard cheese, this is an absolute delight. So I use my microplane multiple times a week I, I have two sizes of microplane actually. I have a really fine one and then I have a wider one for bigger slices of cheese shreds. So that's, get one of those. I think these are like under $20. So it's not a super big financial investment, but you'll use it all the time. Sticking with the kitchen theme, we're gonna move on to a pepper grinder. Now you probably have a bottle of black pepper, you know, on your counter or in a shaker, but really, Take a couple bucks, these are not expensive. You can get them anywhere that sells kitchen supplies and invest in a pepper grinder. Fresh ground pepper will change your life. And that is very dramatic, but true <laughs> because the flavors of fresh ground pepper are so much more powerful. They're more pungent, you get a bigger punch and you get kind of more bang for your grind, I suppose. More flavor for each pepper flake that hits your piece of food. And we use pepper a lot in barbecue. We use pepper on briskets, we use pepper on steaks. Like put good pepper on your meat because you will absolutely taste the difference and super affordable, great way to level up your barbecue game with, without changing a lot in your life or investing a ton of money. We're gonna start moving outdoors, but I'm gonna take this 
moment to talk to you about the most transitional item from inside to outside in your kitchen because you will use this everywhere. This is an instant read thermometer. This is the Thermoworks Thermapen MK4. This is my favorite. It's the one that I've been using for years and years and years and it is so durable. It is a little bit on the pricier side for a kitchen utensil. It comes in about a hundred bucks. But I will say that we have left this outside. I have dropped this in my sink. This has traveled the country with me in suitcases to various barbecue competitions and TV shows. And it has stood the test of time. So I think it's one of those things that's really worth your investment. Um, and I use it every single day. I even use my thermometer to temp test baked goods in my oven. We use them when we're making candies, but we also use them mostly outside on the grill. It'll give you an instant read within three seconds. So you're not holding your hand over a hot fire to get the temperature that you're looking for. The probe just flips out. It gives you a dial or a read on the dial. And then that changes direction as you flip it so that you always have an accurate read. It has a sensor so that it tells you, it lights up if it's dark so you can see it even if you're grilling at night. Um, and you'll use this for everything from chicken to steaks. Like I said, I use mine for baked goods and candies too. It's incredibly versatile, both inside your kitchen and outside in your backyard. So if your spouse is like, ah, that's so expensive, just sell them on what they like to, eat, like, like to cook and then get them on board because they'll be using this as much as you are. All right, let's jump right into it. I'm gonna start really affordable. Let's talk about skewers. Now these are things that I use all the time in my outdoor cooking, whether for shrimp or kebabs or picanha that we're just about to, you know, release a recipe for, so make sure you check that out. Uh, there are two types of skewers that I use all of the time and all of the rest of them have been either sitting in a drawer, or I've gotten rid of them because they just don't get used a ton. If you're gonna invest in some skewers, do metal. I love these two prong skewers. And the reason that I love these is because if you slide anything on here, when you go to flip it on the grill, it's gonna stay. And that's one problem that you run into a lot with skewers, especially if they're round, is when you go to flip something on the grill, the meat just spins or the shrimp just spins and you don't actually get to flip it and you still have to flip it individually anyway. So having the two prongs ensures that the meat stays flat when you flip it and it's really easy to flip. If you can't find or don't want these two prong skewers, buy these skewers that are super cheap. They are flat, but then just thread two of them side by side across whatever you're putting on the grill because it will hold up really, really nicely. Speaking of moving things around on the grill, that's always a hot topic for tools and there are a million tools out there that claim to do it all or do whatever best. But here are a couple that I've simmered it down to because I really don't think you need a ton of gadgets. Um, I love these meat shredder claws. These work as a lifter for heavy items on the grill. Think brisket, pork butts, we even use these on ribs. Um, they're really versatile. They keep your hands away from the direct heat, but they give you um, a massive amount of dexterity. So it just feels like an extension of your arm and they're really super duper easy to use. They also work great if you're pulling chicken, if you're pulling pork, or if you really need a stable surface for slicing something like brisket, slicing something like a London broil that you want really thin or tri-tips. Um, these work great as a meat fork also when you use them just as one. So these are definitely on the list and they come in under 20 bucks super affordable. Next, we're gonna talk about the most used tools, I think, on the grill, and these are the ones that are most marketed. There are 90 million versions of tongs and spatulas on the market. Um, you walk through any, like, home, any store that sells home goods, and you're gonna find tongs and spatulas for the barbecue, but the problem with most of them is they're cheap and garbage, and you don't really get, like, any super utilitarian use out of them. They just exist because that's what goes in a barbecue tool set. But these are ones that I have been using for a couple of years now and they have held up incredibly well and I really, really like them. These are a Weber set. Um, I think they sent these to me. I can't remember if they sent them to me or I bought them years ago, but they have held up so incredibly well. Um, and these are ones that I recommend all the time. So they have 
The hang tag, which is really nice if you have hooks on your smoker or on your grills, because these are quite large, they can be difficult to fit into drawers, that's the downside. Um, but if you have like a dedicated barbecue space where these can hang, they're really great for that. They have a lock on the bottom so that they open really wide. I mean, you can fit a whole pork shoulder in there if you need to move a pork shoulder, I guess. I've never tried. I generally use these for steaks or chicken breasts or pork chops. They have a great length on them so you can keep your hands away from the grill. They're rubber coated so you get nice grip. They're not slippery. And then I think my favorite thing about these are the teeth on the ends. And if you've ever bought multiple pairs of barbecue tongs, you know how annoying it is to grab it and it only has that one little corner on the very tip that clips together. And so if you don't grab your meat on that one tiny little corner, it's gonna slide and it's gonna fall out. But these tongs kind of solve that problem by having these teeth on the side and the tongs are really wide and they're really long. So you have a lot of surface area for gripping and I just, I just really like these. Like these are my go-to. These are the ones that I grab when they're in the drawer and they're clean. These are the ones that I'm gonna pick up because they're my favorite. I think these tongs are also my favorite because they give you a really um, substantial clacking sound. Because you have to do the three taps of the tongs before you can use them. Listen, it's very satisfying. That's a selling point for me. Okay. On to the spatula. This comes with the tongs in the set. And I really like this spatula because again, it gives you that length. And you don't often see a spatula of this size in barbecue and grilling tools. So it gives you a nice wide spatula head. It gives you a nice long handle and then it's rubber coated. And again, it has the hook. So I think it's just a really like great standard spatula and you definitely need a spatula and tongs in your barbecue to barbecue tool arsenal but it doesn't give you any of the fluff that you don't need like the forks and a, you know that those sets always come with stuff that you don't end up using this is a really great minimalist set but it covers all the bases since we're moving things around and using our hands on the grill we're going to talk about gloves now gloves is an area where I've been kind of frustrated. I haven't really found a lot of barbecue glove solutions that I really, really love, but here's kind of like the hacks that we've used to get what we need out of the or out of the gloves that are currently available. We always have a box of these nitrile gloves. We just got these at the local barbecue store, but you can order them online. Um, make sure you order the powder-free gloves because you don't want any like powder or residue on your hands, especially when you're cooking. These are great for prepping meat because then you can have you know, your gloved hands that have raw meat and then you're able to remove those and continue cooking. They're also great if you are moving stuff around on the grill or you're pulling pork. The only problem is these have no heat like prevention at all. So they're not like an oven glove or anything that's gonna keep your fingers from melting. So what we typically do is grab those like super cheap dollar winter cotton gloves and pop those on and then put the nitro glove over the top. It gives you just enough heat resistance that if you're pulling pork, your fingers aren't gonna melt, um, but you still have a lot of dexterity. And that's kind of like our hacky way around using these barbecue gloves that are, so they're like a little bit more versatile, but we do always have a box of those on hand because they are very helpful to have around. When it comes to, uh, you know, a little bit more heat prevention, which we need, especially if we're cooking on charcoal or especially if we're cooking with wood, or especially if we're moving really dirty, hot grill grates around, which happens when you're cooking outside a lot. We really like these leather gloves. These get used all the time. I slide these on if I'm dumping charcoal or if I need to put a grill grate on over hot coals. It gives me a lot of heat prevention and I don't have to worry about them getting dirty because that's what they're meant to do. They're outdoor gloves. They're meant to be used that way. Um, and I like the ones that go up about halfway up my arm because it does give me that heat prevention a little bit further up my arm when I'm reaching over hot coals. So these get used all of the time. Okay. Well, I mean, let's just keep working across the table. We've covered a lot so far, but we still have good stuff coming. All right, let's talk about grill baskets. Uh, I have probably purchased no less than 20 different types of grill baskets in my time cooking outside on the grill because I use them frequently, but I didn't really know what was the most important like features to have in a grill basket. So I bought a bunch of like really gimmicky stuff and then I ended up wasting money. So I'm gonna tell you, keep it simple. <laughs> what you want is a grilling basket of 
size. You want something with a little bit of dimension to it because that means you can put a whole bunch of different things in here. My mistake when I first started was buying too small and then I bought things that were a little bit too gimmicky and complicated. This is as straightforward as it gets. It's kind of like a walk with holes all the way around the bottom and all the way up the sides. Simple handles that are attached by metal, nothing plastic. This holds up beautifully on the grill. And the holes give you all of the access to the flavor. So anything that you put in here is gonna be influenced by the direct heat underneath it. This works beautiful for vegetables. This works great for shrimp. This works great even if you've like chopped chicken into small cubes like you can cook it quickly on the grill it works beautifully for meatballs you can put a meatloaf in here like so 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 many applications for a grilling basket or bowl of this size so this is one of my favorites i think it's outset grillware um and i like the copper color but really i don't know that the brand matters necessarily but keep it simple keep it large and don't overcomplicate it this works great. All right, this next one is specifically for charcoal grill users. If you're cooking on a charcoal grill, invest in a chimney. You can skip the lighter fluid. It makes your chimney, or sorry, makes your charcoal light and heat up really quickly. It speeds up the process for getting your grill ready to cook on. And these again come in under 20 bucks. This thing has been used and abused hundreds of times and it's still holding up. So it's definitely a worthwhile investment if you like to cook with charcoal at all. A worthwhile investment. A worthwhile investment. Buy the charcoal chimney. The Weber charcoal chimney. It's worth the investment, y'all. It's very versatile. It's very, very versatile. <laughs> Last thing on my table is a roll of butcher paper. Of course, this is my beautiful branded butcher paper because they think it's so pretty, but there's butcher paper available everywhere. You don't have to buy mine, although we appreciate your support. Uh, butcher paper is so great because we use it in the smoking game all of the time, specifically for briskets, ribs, pork shoulders, because it helps keep in moisture, but it doesn't uh, soften your bark. Something that's really important when you're smoking low and slow for a really long period of time is that nice crispy bark on the outside. And when you wrap in foil, sometimes you lose that bark. And when you don't wrap at all, sometimes the bark can kind of like extend to the inside and really dry out your meat a little bit. Butcher paper gives you that nice happy medium where it keeps your bark, but it helps hold in all of that delicious moisture. We use it for wrapping things on the grill, but we also use it because it is so pretty. We'll cut pieces off and place it on the table and we'll actually serve directly on the butcher paper. So it gives us, you know, kind of a pretty placemat for serving things, but it is also super functional in the smoking and grilling and barbecue game. And that's it. Did you guys like all of our products? I like all of our products and I will say if you like looked at any of these, <laughs> these are not brand new. These are not things that I bought specifically for this video so I could be like, hey, check out this cool thing that I love so much. Like this is actually straight from my kitchen, straight from my drawers, straight from my backyard and it's stuff that we use every single day. Um, sometimes I feel like you can get a little bit bombarded with you need this, you need this, you need this, but you really don't need a ton to get started and even just a couple of these things if you feel like oh i really think that would help me level up i hope you find this useful and you pick up something that is really valuable to you we're going to include links to all the products that i featured here so it's easy for you to pick up something if that's what you're interested in um, and as always we're grateful you guys are here our whole goal is to help you make better barbecues so you can feed the people you love and become a backyard barbecue hero and I think just a couple little tools can really up your game and get you closer to barbecue hero status. So let me know what your favorite grilling tools are in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Um, and let's have a conversation about what you feel like you can't live without in your toolkit. We'll see you next time. <laughs> they are really fun. They also get points, I think, for like the funness factor. Aside from being super useful, like, <laughs> you feel a little bit animalistic, I dig it. <laughs>